Welcome to this month's RC Racing here in Denmark. We're at the DHI Cup brought to you by Morfars. We're going to be having a chat with Kim Erickson about the fantastic new range of neutral DVDs and also having a look at the third modified A final. Later in the show, we're back in Telford for an exciting view of the first Nitro semi final. That's all on this month's RC Racing. There's lots of visual information about RC Racing in the market, but very little of it is truly independent. And to talk about this new range of completely neutral videos, I'm with Kim Erickson. Kim, tell me the idea behind these. Yeah, the idea was that uh, we wanted to uh, get a DVD that we could uh, sell to our customers and that they could uh, use this DVD to learn about nitro cars, electric cars or drift cars, whatever their interest is. Now, you've made a big point about the fact that this is not being backed by any manufacturer. Why do you think that's important? Yeah, I think it's important because most of the resellers out there sell a lot of different brands. So it was interesting to get a DVD that was neutral, not telling you know only a story about this is an amazing car, but telling what the customer actually wants to know about. How do I buy a car? How do I drive a car? How do I do the maintenance and all that stuff? What does the Nitro Edition cover? The, the Nitro is all about uh, if you don't own a Nitro car, what should I look out for? How do I choose a car? and then how do I start it that's a very important thing with the nitro cars <laughs> yeah and then how do I race it and also on different levels and when I'm finished racing how do I clean it and main, do all the maintenance stuff what have you covered on the electric DVD yeah the electric DVD is actually with the uh, Jonas Kerb and Andy Moore uh, that's also participating in this race and they are taking you from the very beginner the, the plain RTR car telling about what's the parts in the car and all that stuff and then they also take you to the next level how do you drive it for instance how do you want to if you have to take over another car on the track so it's actually the DVD is very interesting because it can be used by the very beginner but also for the more advanced driver now also you guys are based in Denmark but I believe these DVDs they're all available in lots of languages yeah yeah, exactly. Um, all DVDs are in uh, English and some of them are also being launched in uh, German and other languages. And now it's your chance to win a set of those great DVDs. We've got together our DHI Cup partners Morfars to bring you this competition. So to win those DVDs, you have to answer this simple question. Where is the DHI Cup held? Is it A, Denmark? Is it B, Dakar? Or is it C, Darlington? When you know, send your entries A, B or C to win at hpi.tv. That's win at hpi.tv. Coming right up, we have the third modified A final from the DHI Cup, brought to you by Morfars. But modified wasn't the only class on show in Odense back in January. There was also a superstock class, which, slightly differently from the UK, was running with a 9.5 turn handout brushes motor. But a very good field gathered from most of Scandinavia took part, and the standout driver was Tommy Bergstrom, the Swede. He won the first leg of the A5 with absolute ease, but in the second leg he had a slight problem with his motor, which he called cogging, where it actually didn't take off properly, and he was swallowed by the entire field at the start, and eventually had to pull over before requesting to the steward that he be given a second handout motor, which he used to excellent effect to win the third A5 with no problems whatsoever. Superb performance, the guy has actually got Red Bull stickers on his car, and a bit of Red Bull sponsorship, which is a, a good sign for RC racing. Well, that's a stock series, but of course the big event was the Modified, and with the third Modified A final, here's John Hindhoff with your race commentary. There is the car of Pullman Alexander Hagberg, the X-Ray, with a big number one on the windscreen, that green livery has done rather well in the first two legs. In fact, he won leg two, and that's kept him right in the hunt for the DHI Cup brought to you by Morfars. He's one of just three drivers who can still win the title. That's because, of course, it's only the best two of three results. Mark Reinhardt, well, with a first and a second, clearly he's got the most points to date. And even if he didn't score too well in this next race, then someone would have to go one better and get two victories, and only Hagberg can do that. The only other man really in it, oddly enough, is Victor Vilk, who although he got a 10th position in race two, 
he got a second in race one, which obviously puts him right in the hunt. Let's have a look at the rest of the grid then. There's Mark Reinhardt in second position. Third is Timo Linu. Gilles Grosskram in fourth position on the Tamiya. Victor Vilk, there he is, the man we've just been talking about. Watch out for that yellow car. He has got the speed, sometimes lacks a little bit of concentration. In sixth, Mark Fisher. Really need a, a slightly better result in race two to keep him in the hunt. Seventh is Jonas Kerup. Yannick Prumper in eighth. Steen Graveson in ninth. And Krista Anderson really are, I'm afraid, bit part players at this stage. However, they'll still be racing for pride from the back of this very impressive grid indeed. So it all comes down to this Hagberg pointing towards the first corner in the green number one car. He's got the start, but we've seen Reinhardt has been very, very aggressive in the opening lap or two. Has Hagberg got the measure of him this time? And he seems to have pulled out just a little bit more. This is why he made the mistake before he's done it again. I don't believe it. And Reinhardt this time has took one, two extra corners, but he's gone through. Lino's gone through. Oh, and Filk has been hit there. Here's the other man who in with a chance. This is tremendous stuff for Reinhardt. He's away. Let's have another quick look. Yes, it was the corner before again that was the problem for Hagberg. He went over the kerb. Reinhardt clean as a whistle there. Hagberg tried to close the door, but I'm afraid it was way too late. There is Lenu going through, and you just saw in the background the start of the accident for Victor Vilker as well. So Reinhardt now. Well, the pressure is on, but this man thrives on that kind of pressure. Double world champion Lenu actually can let him go through. He can take this second position because the points he's got at the moment would be enough, but it'd be nice to go and win it with two wins. Lenu following in the wheel tracks of the German. Where is Victor Wilk and Hagberg? Are there anywhere that can challenge? I'm not sure they are. Looking back down through the cars behind, there's a little problem there for Lenu in second place. He went wide. Looks like Grosskamp's coming through, and I can see Mark Fisher there with that bright yellow and orange car in fourth position. He's come up from sixth. There he is now. And there's no sign, I'm afraid, of any of the two challenges to Mark Reinhardt, so there's Vilk, there's Vilk, well down the field. He must be in sixth or seventh position, and that's just not good enough. And the green car of Hagberg is absolutely nowhere to be seen. Was that a quick flash of him there in fifth position? No, it's not. He's further down the field than that. I wonder if he's had problems, further problems. In fact, I think he's battling with Vilker for seventh or eighth. So here's the battle for third then. Grosskamp and Fisher. Oh, and there's... That's Lenu. What's Lenu done there? He's gone off and he's dropped back to third place as Grosskamp goes through. Now let's have a look here. Oh dear me, that's a big mistake. He's gone very wide indeed and drops back in between those two cars. Battling for, which now of course it's all battling for second, isn't it? It's Grosskamp, Lenu, Fisher. All going through and in fact they're being joined by one, two other vehicles as well. Grosskamp then with the pressure on. All of this, of course, is great news for Mark Reinhardt on the Tamiya, who is just pulling away from this battle. Got a quick flash of him there in the top left-hand corner of the screen. Fisher, third of those four cars at the moment. There he goes through. He's looking quite racy, quite aggressive. But he's having to deal again with a challenge from behind. And this battle for second and third is heating up again. As Lenu has a look round the outside. Jill Grosskamp must be feeling the pressure there. The touch! Well, that was almost inevitable, wasn't it? You could see that happening from two corners before. And a fairly robust overtaking manoeuvre by Timo Lenu. And there it is again. Oh, dear me. Well, there might be a few words on the podium after. That was uh, fairly uncompromising, wasn't it? It's got Lenu back up into second place, Fisher in third. And they are still battling out for these minor positions. Mark Reinhardt gone, by the way. Good night and good luck. He's out of here. And here's Hagberg. Here's Hagberg in the green car, the fourth of those battling for second place. So, and Hagberg's just had somebody off there, I think. In the background, yes, he has. So he's fighting back through. So now he's second, third, fourth position, but he's dropped a bit of bit of time there. I wonder if that was Carrot that he just uh, had over. But he's not close enough, surely, to do anything 
about getting on the podium or better still he needs a second or a first to pressure Mark Reinhardt who we've seen very little of because he's just gone about his work very cleanly very calmly and leads and he's just flashed through the top of the picture there he's got the best part of half a lap on this battle for second which continues to rage on a bit of pride going on here Lino and Mark Fisher Lino with the x-ray Fisher with the Coralie and just doesn't seem to be able to get close enough does he Fisher closes up but not close enough to have a big dive down the inside the leader coming through to complete his last lap as we're watching this battle for second place which surely is not going to change too much there is Mark Reinhardt and he has taken it two wins in a second you'll have that thanks very much indeed drops the second place two wins will do it and he will win the DHI Cup brought to you by Morfars we're getting used to see Reinhardt win and he's done it again in style leg three results then see Mark Reinhardt take a second victory of the meeting Timo Lino in second Mark Fisher in third and Alexander Hagberg in fourth position what does that mean for the overalls here in the DHI Cup brought to you by Morfars well quite simply with two victories there is no one who can touch double world champion Mark Reinhardt and he wins it in second place is Hagberg courtesy of the fact that he had one race victory although he's tied up points with Timo Lino in third place and Mark Fisher in fourth position let's head straight down to the pits now then and Nick Damon is with our champion the DHI Cup has been added to but it's about everything else that you've uh, won recently, Mark. I mean, you're obviously now world champion, European champion, one twelfth European champion. Getting bored yet? Uh, no, no. I think every race is uh, important to win or to finish on the podium. So it was a hard race. Like Alex showed a super good performance. He was like almost unbeatable in the qualifying. Uh, but I, I tried the finals because I knew in the beginning I have to push hard to uh, catch him, and uh, yeah, it worked out. So it was pretty good. Do you think that's down to perhaps you have more experience of, of, of top line racing? I mean, you know, there's a fantastic manoeuvre to get past him here. There was that marvellous manoeuvre in, in, in uh, Thailand to get past uh, Hara. I mean, how different is it racing to qualifying? Yeah, I think the qualifying is more, more, more relaxed. You just drive for yourself. But if you have to battle with another uh, driver, then it's, uh, yeah, it's getting more difficult. And I knew that uh, I was a little bit relaxed into the race. And uh, he was the first time in a big race on a pole position. So I knew that it would be not so easy for him to, uh, to stand under pressure like this. And yeah, you could see in the beginning he made some small mistakes. And I mean, if you hit a small dot and it's a small jump on the next corner, then it's already too wide. And then I have to try the chance to, to pass him. And now it's time for Nitro Rallycross action and the first semi-final from the Neo 9 and with it is your race commentator, John Hindhoff. So here is the grid for the Nitro semi-final air. Jared Thibault with the Kyosho from the USA is on pole position. Here's two countrymen, Ryan Lutz and Ryan Mayfield, who of course has already won the electric here this weekend. Well, he's in third position. Best of Brits is Darren Bloomfield with the Losi in fourth position. Down there in seventh, the world champion Atsushi Hara with the hot bodies. In the second half of the grid, well, what an international flavour. 
the Czech Republic, the USA, the UK, Sweden and Germany all represented. So here's the countdown, we'll see the guys trying to get the clean start. A little bit of movement from the front row from Tibor, but he's got away cleanly now. Can he get round the right-hander? He does. The two Americans slotting in behind him in second and third. So it's USA 1, 2 and 3 at the moment, but there's Darren Bloomfield coming through into third position and breaking them up. But at the front of the field, it's Jared Tibor from Ryan Lutz over the infield. And the first four just beginning to break away slightly. Tebow, Lutz, and it is Darren Bloomfield on the low C in third position, but he's just come on a challenge there. And I think that was Mayfield who's gone back through into third position. Super quick reflexes needed here to keep these buggies balanced. Two semi-finals, of course. And new for this year, the fastest 14 will go into the final. Challenge for the lead, and they've come together. Lutz and Tebow. Third place driver got involved there as well, but everyone has, I think, just about survived. Yes, they have. So, Tebow still leads from Ryan Lutz in second position. What that has done is allowed the chasing pack to gain on them a little bit. And Lutz is under pressure. Will he withstand it? Love this section of the circuit. Lutz has gone a little wide and he's tipped there. And he's tipped again. But he's holding on. Oh, then he's made the mistake. Lutz has gone wide. He's dropped a couple of positions there. Now, what you mustn't do is try to make them up straight away. That's exactly what he has done. And he's dropped at least another couple of positions. Well, that's great news for Tebow because one of his major contenders, his countryman, Ryan Lutz, who qualified in second position with the Tamiya, has dropped way down. Fifth position, I think, at the moment. Although he's still in with a shout because there's a gaggle of cars which is Mayfield, Lee Martin in third, fourth, Borja Hernandez Cordoba, the Spaniard, then fifth is Ryan Lutz, and they're the battle we're watching at the moment. It's a second on down over. And really nothing between them at the moment. It was a difficult choice, of course, as to when you try to attack. As we've seen already, you can actually lose a position there but that was a nice move but that oh, it hasn't been quite completed and again you see there you go for a position and all of a sudden it all goes horribly wrong you think you've got up a position and in fact you've dropped one in fact you're going to drop two positions here that's a shame because over the whoops on the backside some big air actually moved that buggy up a position you've seen Darren Bloomfield there picking up a place as well but this is the leaders and Tebow has been quietly closed down by Mayfield in second. The two Americans with a huge lead on the rest of the pack. Now, all of a sudden, Tebow has to pick his pace up because he had a much bigger lead than this a few laps ago. His pace is OK. Rhythm looks good. Difficulty is, of course, if you've just throttled off a little bit to be a tad more conservative someone starts dragging back to you then you have to pick up that pace again and it's not always the easiest thing to do but Yared seems to have done a good job and the Kyosho, oh, no, what am I talking about he's lost it completely that's a huge off and he's lost the lead and well two or three seconds as well a massive mistake what happens here oh he just caught one of the Undulations on the infield, you saw the back of the buggy off the ground and from then on, I'm afraid there's nothing the leader can do. Not sure he could have avoided that really, to be honest. So Ryan Mayfield, who's already taken the electrics, goes through into the lead, rather gifted that one, but he'll have it. Accepted the gift and will push on. Now this is a pit stop race, we haven't mentioned that already, but here is the leader coming into the pit lane, there's the second place driver as well, so Mayfield in, oh need to be quicker than that with the leader, and as you can see, Tebow's made up some time, and oh where's Tebow got I think he's lost it coming out of the pits there, yes he just didn't get himself underway, and that means Bloomfield now has come into second, however Mayfield was so far ahead that even without a great pit stop, 
he's got out in the lead of the other buggies and he's got a pit stop in hand and that here as in any other form of motor racing with a pit stop is absolutely crucial so Mayfield leads now Tivo's thought he's back we're back through in a second yes he has and here are the two leaders coming towards us oh they clip in the air my goodness me you don't see that happen very often and again there's uh, I don't think there's any oh dear me well that's the second time he's made a mistake there Yarid Tivo got the lead in this incident here have a look through the air there's nothing you can really do to sanction against that but he was only ahead for a few yards before he messed up the right hander and Mayfield's gone back through into the lead well, no love lost between these two countrymen Kyosho versus Tamiya at the uh, versus Associated excuse me at the head of the field in amongst the traffic as well some people will have stopped some people trying to go longer on the fuel across the line for another lap here are the leaders and again danger time in this infield it's a bat marker that's gone over ahead of them and that has maybe just put the leader off a little bit and that looks like damage all kinds of carnage going on there Yarid Tebow's gone through back into the lead this is not good news really for any of these drivers remember it is all about time this year you really want to just get a pretty clear run because the final will be the top 14 in time there are no automatic qualifiers from each heat on just on position so you must be quick in theory of course all of the 14 could come from one semi semi-final unlikely I know so top times is what everybody's looking at and all this battling is just slowing them down you would have thought that there could have been some kind of arrangement made to get going and get the final that's the leader the leader's gone over Tebow has thrown it away and we're in the dying stages here and now Mayfield makes a mistake and he's gone over Tebow back in the lead goodness me right at the death it'll be the flag this time round for Yarid Tebow but what a disaster for Ryan Mayfield who the car's not restarted and this is how it happened gets a tap there but it was his own mistake car's gone over and I'm afraid the engine's died and he will not complete the full distance well an action-packed start and finish to that race and rather too much bumping in the middle I feel but Yared Tivo has come home with the victory but it's all about time here at the moment we can't say whether any or all of these drivers will go through into the final Bloomfield in second then Bayer Lutz Martin Atsushihara in sixth Mayfield not completing the full distance is scored in seventh position and he'll be biting his nails to see if he can get through to the final well, that's all we've got time for in this month's RC Racing, and we'd like to personally thank Morfars for their support of the DHI Cup on the show. Coming up next month, we have an absolute nitro fest for the Neo 09, with both the second semi-final and the main event, the final of the Neo. That's all next month on RC Racing. Absolute carnage!